What's up guys, Headphone Steel here, back with this week's review for The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 4, The Siege. So as always, there's going to be a spoiler alert, because it's, depending on when you listen to this episode, it'll be either day of or maybe next day after the episode released. But going into that, if you watch the episode and you want love one my feedback, then definitely keep on listening. If you don't want any spoilers, watch the episode and then come back and listen to it. So... The episode has a runtime of about 39 minutes. It's the fourth episode in season two titled The Siege. So this episode seems like it's very notable in that it's more than just a bridge building episode for the Mandalorian uh, looking for um, Ahsoka's planet from last episode and more of a current timeline building episode for the universe at large. So... Um, as far as the look, it's along the lines of A New Hope meets Jedi Knight 2, the video game. So if, it's along those lines of the um, time frame after the fall of the Empire, but we still have uh, remnants of the Empire operating. We have the Revenant, Dark Jedi, and things like that still out and about in the Empire in the outer reaches of space. So those adventures of Kyle Katarn, some of the Luke Skywalker stuff, and then things like that happen in Jedi Academy and stuff like that. So overall, a very interesting look and feel. Um, the favorite sequence I had of the episode was the Escape to the Canyon because it felt along the lines of the Beggar's Canyon um, line that we got from Luke. So it felt along those lines. Uh, so we have um, Criff, Gar... I can't say the, the Apollo Creed's character in the film, Cara Dune, and the blue guy from season one um, escaping from a f- hidden facility, which I'll get to in a little bit. I know I'm skipping around on that point. Um, and then they're chased by TIE fighters and they're escaping through a canyon. So overall, a very good sequence there. Felt a little bit slow, but I know the TIE fighters probably had trouble in the canyon. So a lot of back and forth there. They end up getting rescued by... The Mandalorian, um, whose ship is now repaired, so he can now proceed on, um, onto uh, the planet where Ahsoka is. So we'll see how that all goes. But um, the most important line I found in the episode was um, the whole time of what the Empire is trying to build. So um, I have a feeling, and my guess is that we have that this is going to be that transition period in the Empire where we're transitioning from the Empire to the First Order and um, the there's various and this is the various elements of the Emperor's final plan that he, they need a new leader and um, to now get into what we see in the facility is that this is one of the facility one of the cloning facilities where the Empire is trying to create a clone body and infuse the force into um, an existing living being. So I read some spoilers and saw that it might be um, directly related to uh, Supreme Leader Snoke. So some of the outlines kind of look like it, so it's possible it was related to Snoke, but um, it's more of an overarching idea that um, there's cloning technology going into effect and they're trying to infuse force power still into um, non-force force infused people so um definitely an interesting um episode that that so it's less about the what's coming next and the mandalorian and the child and more about the universe at large so we'll kind of so i'm guessing we're going to kind of see how the mandalorian fits into the whole um universe at large and maybe we're going to see more about the mandalorians um built kind of trying to come up with an uprising and Um, they end up falling apart because the Empire defeats them. Or maybe even it's one of the early battles that the um, First Order is able to um, secure is that they defeat the Mandalorian so they are able to become a dominant force in the galaxy. So kind of a rite of passage for the First Order that... um, now that we've defeated the Mandalorians, a very formidable race of people, they can secure their strength in the galaxy and even to go after the New Republic and take over from there. So overall, a very good episode. Uh, relatively short, still at 40 minutes, longer than the past ep- couple of episodes. Um, not as long as the first episode with the Crate Dragon, but overall still a very good episode. 
So uh, definitely worth a watch. I am going to rewatch the episode because there were lots of little things and not lots of um, various ele elements that I liked visually in the episode, um, especially since it harkens to some more video game stuff that reminded me, notably from that Jedi Knight 2 and Jedi Academy period with Kyle Katarn and stuff after the Return of the Jedi that we saw in video games and now see on the um, relatively big screen or small screen at home. Um, but along the lines of a Knights of the Old Republic where we saw the Kray Dragon battle from Episode 1, we now see something that looks similar to Jedi Knight 2 and Jedi Academy, but on the big screen. And more of the remnants of an empire where they have, they're calling for reinforcements, they're still following protocol, and they're still trying to maintain their grasp on their empire even though it doesn't currently exist. And I'm hoping at some point we get to see that proper transition from the Empire to the First Order. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01 for your own feedback, uh, comments, and, um, thoughts, and all of that good stuff. You can find the website at PatelN01.com for past episodes supporting the show. Um, subscription links and all that good stuff and the show now is on Patreon so if you want to support the show there um, that is an option with various tiers and options um, at your disposal but thanks for tuning into this episode and until next time